Hi everyone, I'm Mary, and today we're going to be looking at the mid-episode between episodes 1 and 2 of Hunter the Parenting from Ruva Alphabusa. This is going to be Kitten and Big D's primer on the supernatural and folklore. I don't know what we're getting into here because I'm kind of still on a mental blank of Pyodor going all, um, how to put this? Murder vampire sounds a little too on the nose. Or I guess the fang. Yeah. Either way, this happens right before that, so either we're going to see a bit of what happens with the Big D investigating with Kevin. I can't resist doing that joke. I have my five I realize that. Or we're just going to get some backstory in the actual lore and how much he does actually know about what's going on, which I'm assuming none of this is going to be accurate. And also it's going to be completely accurate to real life, just not anything to do with Vampire the Masquerade or any of the White Wolf properties that connect to it. So we're going to jump right in and see just how many levels of fuck this is going to get. You know, I gotta stop saying that because Pewter does, uh, yeah, that last Dead Dig episode. <sighs> yeah, not Conrad Cruz is definitely gonna fuck things up. So all the same, you guys know the deal. There's a link below to the original video. Hit it up and let's get started. I really do like this intro song. Hmm, bit loud. Oh, it's a... Huh. Oh, so just a little aside here. This is the first time I've seen them done multi-stack layers like this. Cool little extra. Uh, to me, see what I mean, I uh, just want to go back a bit. Look how the front, like you have the overall flat ground right here, which is really well done. Looks very much like a, oh God, it even has the metallic drying section draining into the sink. Oh God, I am having flashbacks to old houses. But behind that, you can see how there's a different 3D animation to the I think it's 3D generated grass and then the rear ground itself. So you have different layers of animation moving in. Well, it's a lot easier just to do it this way because it seems to be my computer's not working. Yeah, see how they're moving at different angles from the rest of it? Okay, so yeah, there's two angles here. There's uh, two panes. They have the front pane, which is inside the house, and there's a the back pane, which is the backyard and the trees. And they have them moving against each other to show that you're seeing a different perspective from the camera. That's just really cool. Yeah, featuring Big Deal. Wait, Big D's home style omelet? I really should have watched this before I eat. No, after. I don't know. It could go either way. I'm not sure. That scares me. Hunting. Humming the what song? Gotta love me some cock song. Oh, what a beautiful morning to. Who the fuck is in my kitchen? Oh, oh. Son in law! Good morning, Sidney! Okay, uh, two questions. One, this is his house, not Big D's. Two, because he mentioned the previous, I guess technically the episode that comes after this but came out before it, that this is his house. Also, he has a sword? I was going to say, why didn't he draw it in the first episode? But also, he was literally out of his mind on DMT, so that actually makes a lot more sense. Good morning, sword. Sword, what? <laughs> Oh, this old thing. <laughs> Where do you keep that? Oh. I'm sorry. I uh, thought you were the oh. landlord. Uh, I own this house. Technically he is. Hey, see? We don't have a landlord. Oh, so that makes you the landlord. Yeah, it actually does. Parasite. <laughs> well, in either case, good morning, Mike. <laughs> oh my god, he's a punk. They actually made the emp sorry, Big D a punk. Sorry, they're British. He's anti-authority by saying that the landlord is a parasite, and when he identified him, he called him at it. He's a flat-out, honest-to-God, original vein punk. Considering his age, he might well have been part of the original punk movement in Great Britain. I love this! He almost child, uh, I have a request. Almost uh, child? Put the sword away, How old do you have to be to actually get it to be I a can... child? Capital! Consider it done! <laughs> Oh, oh, son-in-law, my body yearns for my- He said his favorite son was named Horse in one of the slide transitions, and his mug says Horse. I've been told, because shape-shifting is a thing, that is very much, in all likelihood, his unironic son. I'm very much thinking about nothing that could possibly do with this. Also, wow, they usually have him smiling like this big, but even bigger, more manic to the point where he looks more deformed wide. 
So seeing him at normal human-ish proportions of more of a thinner face instead of obscenely overdrawn because massive DMT smile, it's kind of weird because it looks really not weird. Which having said that, I realize also sounds, stop me if I hear this before, weird. My special omelet. Can you make it for me? Does he know how? Sure. Do you have a recipe? I'll say, command the instructions to enter the brain with my powerful voice. What? I'm can yeah. All right. Just need to mix boys egg milk. Mm. Oh. Yeah. Oh. oh shit! Do we have any jam left? Oh. <clears throat> One snail flakes. Not the worst type of cereal I've ever heard of. It's a very low bar. I'm not going to even think about what that is. Also, people told me when I questioned what egg milk was, if this was a real thing. And they like, yeah, it's basically eggnog. And it's actually a real drink that people in Britain eat. Not drink. I want to think asking for jam is part of a joke. Please. Do not correct me. I don't want to be wrong about that. I really don't want to think that there's actually jam in something that people actually drink because that's a real drink and it's actually containing jam. I recognize that sound they used. That wasn't a blender, which is probably what they were using, but that's specifically an electric drill sound because it has a very high rotational speed, so it has a very higher pitched vroom. Where a blender actually has a slower one because they're, unless put immediately to a high setting, going to have a lower pitch. Woo. It's a very small distinctive sound, but I had family that could both cook and was a gearhead. So I got to hear those sounds very often, usually when they were using power tools to then fix the cooking tools. Not successfully, I should add. The, the two abilities didn't cross over very well. But yeah, so they were using a drill, they needed jam, and they were making an egg drink. Why am I torturing myself by still thinking of this? I don't know. Also, random aside to the style here, I love how they're breaking up the scene composition with where the two characters were in the comic style by having the scenery behind them and just the slash between. It's just really cool. You can see it as a full-on comic board. We are out. I'll have to go get more when I next go grocery snatching. Oh, God, snatching. Marcus won't eat his porridge without jam. Oh, oh thank God. A child. He wants his porridge, but only with jam. He'll eat the beans, but not the sprouts. He wants his leek soup, but with absolutely no marmite. Such a baby. He is literally a baby. My baby. Precious little small child. Oh, my God. He is so small and adorable. Smallest possible child. Small. Wait, smallest possible? I thought he was making a joke about the small thing because it's like, oh, he's my baby, because he's not small. Granted, door is wider, so technically it counts. But then Kitten is agreeing. How big are the other children? And then he's the small one. I'm also assuming he meant small as when he was born, not how big he is now, because he's significantly tall. Not as wide as door, though. I'm going to give him that still. Perfect child! Wow. Uh, they really love Marcus. Absolutely not. But will gobble up Brancaster muscles like it's just goddamn That's birthright. a Brancaster muscle. True. Norfolk has corrupted my son. Norfolk. He would never eat marine mush before a return to <gasps> these accursed reaches. Oh, okay. So one people mentioned because of the Team Fortress 2 thing. This is set in 2006, roughly. But he went to Norfolk. That's a very oddly specific reference to a location and saying Marine because there was a Marine base in Norfolk, America. And right now they're in Britain. Why was he in America? In Norfolk specifically. What did he do there so often that he got into mussels? And I'm assuming they mean actual mussels as in the seafood. I assumed it was some kind of joke. No, apparently it's just the seafood. Two? Oh, dear God, he can afford those? Those things are not cheap, man. If you're getting mussels for breakfast, there's only a few places that do that. And I'm just going to throw it out there. As far as the price of it, it's like, okay, which would I rather like? <laughs> this breakfast or a fucking car payment? Because they're similar. 
Maybe I'm only thinking of a specific place and maybe he found a good one and maybe the price only escalated after this point. But dear fucking God, how loaded are they? Actually, wait, if he's grocery snatching for literally probably decades, if not centuries, because I'm assuming he's a lot older than he looks because emperor is who he's spiritually successor based on. Never mind. Actually, food budget would actually add up over time. He's probably very rich. Does he even know what happens in the ocean? I don't. It's terrifying. Put the muscles on his pony. To be fair, I do know a good bit of what happens in the ocean. And the deeper down you get, the more accurate everything he just said is terrifying. And it's completely unironically true. I'm sorry. What did you want for your omelet? All right. So take the D-eggs and whisk them in a bowl. D-eggs? D-eggs? Like duck great eggs. D? Oh. Does the D in big D stand for duck? I will remind you. That I own illegal firearms. Right. You sorry. didn't use them. Don't forget the milk. Also the sword. Of course. Um, Are they illegal in Britain? Wait, there's no milk, I think. No, it's in the bag. They have a bag of milk? What? Oh. Isn't this unpasteurized? Louis Pasteur was a fascist in line with the New World Order. In and now we have a guaranteed timeline that he's a punk and a rebel from Louis Pasteur's time. I don't actually know when that was. I think it was early 19th century, so 1900s. Unless I have the 19th, that's actually the 20th century. It could be the, could be the 1800s or the 1900s. I honestly don't know, and it's bugging me. It's mostly bugging me because I remember that I did it one time. Remember that. Because I got it wrong on a test and then remember the date up until I forgot it again. So I would have failed the test in hindsight. That did not work out like I hoped. I really got to repress that memory more. More importantly, showing his age too. I want to say that having fresh milk probably stole it from... Oh, grocery snatching. He's literally stealing things from farms. I thought it was stealing from a supermarket. No, he's stealing from farms. That means he probably went up to a cow or a goat and milked it into a bag. This is my American sensibilities on here, and I get the joke in just saying American and sense in the same sentence. Hearing about milk in a bag sounds weird. That said, I know it's a thing. I've seen people do it. It looked weird to me then, too. But it's a thing you can find pictures of online, and it is real. And I still don't get how anyone can do that without puncturing it every single time. I oh, look at paper bags, and plastic bags, and they just... Um, you know, after living on the road for 10 years... Only I can imagine settling down in Norfolk must have felt quite cramped. Oh, he settled cramped? down. <laughs> no. Oh. The earth beneath us thrusts to the planet's heart, dear boy. Its air and heaven stretch Deep. past our reckoning windows to a fathomless beyond. Oh. Not also, he was poor. I expected. Why Norfolk? Beautiful That's not cheap. Child. Even in the smallest of places, entire worlds may exist. If not in one's surroundings, then behind another's eye. It is only cramped if you lack vision. And this is one of those rare moments where a character is showing wisdom that they're, I'm sure the very next thing out of his mouth is going to be incredibly crazy sounding to negate this effect. But in the moment, especially with this tiny little background effect, see if you can hear it. Like, okay, I have and to press play. Another's eye. It is only there's just a tiny bit of music in the background, just a little bit. And it's very soft. It's very melodic and it's very hard to hear, but it is there. So it gives extra weight to his words because of how triggering memories and sensations with sound is one of the easiest ways to do it. Technically, the easiest way is smell, but you can't get that through the computer. And I never want that to change. But right now you could see that he's talking about something that he has a great deal of experience with talking about the lack of vision talking about how it's a world that you can't see without someone else's clarity. All of this, everything here, is great amounts of wisdom that he's putting on display, which you almost never get either from this character in the previous two episodes, as in not telling them about why you shouldn't let vampires eat each other, which he hopefully knew about. I'm pretty sure he knew about because he freaked out when he found out they did it. Also, I'm assuming he just didn't tell them because, you know, who's going to feed a vampire they have in captivity? Yeah, they did. But more importantly, it's just really cool to see that little moment of wisdom, soft-spoken and given in just conversation. And now watch him completely destroyed in the next thing he says. Only cramped if you lack vision. And money. Wow. 
deep sinking. Yes. Uh, only as deep as the ooze water at Yarmouth's Pirates Cove Adventure Golf Course. Just going to go on the record there. Calling it an ooze is too nice. They know. They know what they did. These are the thoughts skimmed from the froth of my incredible mind, son. If there were any justice in this world, <laughs> they would be foundational philosophies by now. Nevertheless, I will begin construction of the omelette sauce. God damn, they actually did the shout out line. I'm sorry, just talking about his wisdom and his sayings and his philosophy being the, well, the underpinning of the society. I just... It, I'm not sure it's entirely a shout out to 40k and the entire TTS series, but god damn, it sounds like one because again, member in 40k, everything is based on him. His wisdom, as much as they fail to follow it, is what they think they're following. And most like all other types of philosophy, people have no idea what it actually says, even though when they say it, they don't get what it means and then do the exact opposite without realizing it. Almost every time in every philosophy. Yeah, the thing about being a philosophy major, which thank God I wasn't one, but I took the classes and it's depressing as fuck, is you're going to understand how wrong everyone is and that it's useless to try and change their minds. <laughs> Great shout out, though, just the previous characterization. Well, wait, can't I do that? No, I just do not trust you with this. Focus on the omelet. <laughs> oh. Put in those carbon rods, the ones oh. on the second drawer to the right. Pretzels? Yeah, I was wondering what we were going to do with those. Wait. Are they just What's carbon? God, the water in Pirate's Cove. It always looks so artificial. Every artificial like bit of water in every golf course looks like something's going to try and like grab and you from it. Tried to make it from scratch, but stopped at the color blue. Only got halfway there. Oh, really? Oh, they got to the color blue? That's actually better than most. I'm not salty. I'm not salty at all. Because the salt wouldn't survive long enough. It? And yes, somehow salt became water. able to die. Yes. Well, as you said, it's all groddy and blue. No, boy! The story behind the water! What? Not... particularly? Behind and the one? And I don't think they'd tell anyone if they, uh... Died in it? ...did have a story. Blue slips sink ships on Pirate's Cove. Eh? At the golf course. Mm. At the mini golf it course. the work of various different creatures. Creatures? I love it how this when has nothing that, to do, do with it. But he's going into actual war because of it. Club head or the groundskeeper? The club head. Well, the groundkeeper. Well, what silent the couple of horrors you have in this nation. Okay, so we they shall mean different hunt things them today. down. The Norfolk County Golf Union might find that device. <laughs> oh, child, there is not. Norfolk's a place in Great Britain, isn't it? When they said Marine and Norfolk, I really thought it was America, but no, apparently they're in Britain. Because he's talking about what he knows of it, so it's definitely where they're at right now. Huh. Dang. I thought that would be how they got Doran, but no, apparently not. Not a golfer alive, I cannot kill. Probably accurate. Oh, uh, pour some sulfur in there just to get that tang going. Sulfur? <laughs> Uh, how's your omelette sauce coming? Oh, it's a simple thing. One tablespoon tomato paste, one tablespoon honey, Ooh. water, sauerkraut, ketchup, tonkatsu, a bit of RBMK reactor core graphite to a taste. Bit of what? Uh, ketchup. It's not that he's eating it that's surprising because. This is a fantasy series ish, ish fantasy, and they've already proven to have definitely dealings with the less than normal. More surprising that he already has shavings from a reactor. Even as a joke, considering how often TTS. And now Hunter is probably going to carry through on some of its random references, making sense. Oh my. That's a bit off, He it? actually has part of a rector. No! shavings from it already. Oh, that reminds me. I heard about your little story. Uh, the one about the fiddler and the monk. Oh yeah, from the first did episode. You? Which Taylor was right before this. Totally charming. Also wrong? Tell me though, are there any similar stories surrounding Great Yarmouth? Or 
hell. Anywhere around old East Anglia, as the natives call East it. East Anglia? Of course, it's a whole bloody legendarium. Uh, anything in particular that strikes your fancy? My mind can devour all in this world. Spectres, witches, werewolves, giraffes. I want it all. Well, they got giraffes. Wait, giraffes? Africa Live Safari. There's a safari? You know what? No, actually, that makes perfect sense because Great Britain. Never mind. That makes sense. It's going to be surprising if giraffes in England. Safari. What? Uh, let me have a think. <laughs> He's going to go eat the giraffes. I shall drink caffeine. Uh, all right. I've got a good one to start off. Now I want coffee. For the ghost side of things, one of my favorites is the bizarre tale of the Haysborough Torso. Do I? No, that sounds absolutely inane! Continue! <laughs> okay, so... Interesting phrasing he had, though, for saying he could devour the coast, anything with his mind. Almost at the border between Great Yarmouth and North Norfolk, there's this little village called Haysborough, right? How's that spell? And that's confirmation that Norfolk is a place in Great Britain, is specifically where they're at. But also close enough to the sea for Marines. And probably marine in the sense that it's a marine atmosphere and marine location, not marine as in troops. Ah, disappointed. Also, probably a lot cheaper because that place in America is not affordable. Uh, H-A-P-P-I-S-B-U-R-G-H. <laughs> your people's rejection of your own language is inspiring. Fun being as it's true. I will kill the queen. But yes! Again! He's the original punk, apparently, because he wants to kill the queen, too. Oh, my God. I just, this is... Also, setting up that he is very much not English, not American, because I'm pretty sure he's older than that, too. Or maybe he actually isn't older than that, and that's why. Also, when he says your people and your language, saying that it's not his, so his first language wasn't English, but he's been around long enough that he wants to kill the queen. He's dating himself quite a bit here. It's actually probably the most information we've got about him in quite a while. I love how these are jokes he's making, at least as far as we're concerned. They're probably terrifying to Kitten, because he knows enough to be scared. Also, literally had a sword pulled on him, which dates him there. It just, I'm sorry, just in a few minutes already, we've had a lot of details pointing to so much of his backstory. I'm just sitting here by comparison to normal 40k timeline stuff, and it's like, yeah, we know his backstory because he told us in an episode... But everything else is so, we don't really know what's going on. And we just get so many mentions and references here that we can start making correlations. And nothing is being stated flat out, but we're given all the information we need to start making assumptions. Which may or may not be wrong, but they're at least educated. It's so refreshing. I love this. I am aware of that wretch's hamlet. We lived in the caravan park for a month before this fucking ham of a man banned us from the public bathroom. What did you, you do in them? Why did he do that? I do not wish to get into what did it. What you do? I divorced him the week prior, and it was fucked. Uh, it is time for the rice. Uh, was this omelet has rice? Fear not. Tis my burden. Uh, you can. Also, no omelets with rice are actually really good. It really helps fluff them up, especially if you curve it over. It mixed in, it actually makes it hard to stick together. At least that's the few times I've done it. It actually works really well. Carbon rods are still a little weird, but honestly, considering what he's eaten so far, it's not the worst thing he's put in there. Ketchup. Ew. But more importantly, so he was banned from the public bathrooms from the guy he divorced the week before. Not banned from the park, though. Whatever they did while married in the bathrooms was so bad that in hindsight, that's... Oh. I'm just going to drop this entire line of thinking altogether and never think about it again. Go ahead and shred in some cheese and chlorine, please. Uh, both are beneath us. Ah. Cheese and chlorine? Oh, oh okay. yeah, we're going with the public pool version. So. Hey, chlorine and sulfur? Oh, God, this is literally killing you. A little south of Haysborough, about half a mile from that caravan park, there's an intersection between three roads. In the midst lies a small, grassy triangle, quaint in its size, with not much to offer. I immediately assume that it is a spectre, a vampire, a goblin creature turned into a walking sir, sir, abomination please, just, that is in just... fact trying- This makes perfect sense for him, immediately assuming something's trying to kill him, thus pulling out the sword on Kitten earlier. And you know how I mentioned the really restrained smile was kind of weird because we ever never saw it before? Ever never saw it? Uh, technically accurate, but still. This is more what I'm used to, like that he Facial features are an illusion of my mind. Which, for all I know, might not be a joke. 
because he did mention his mind could devour all, and I'm kind of assuming that wasn't actually the joke in the line. It was just said for fun up until you realize much later it's not a joke. He's definitely the character I expect to see. Most things are bullshit, except for the most fucked up ones. Crossing the roads right now. Road is what my bus drives on. Yeah. Is he already high? Well. Oh, he just had an acid flashback during that conversation, didn't he? There once was a well, and well, well, well. well the well isn't well doing done. so well because it's not there anymore. Damn it! Oh well. If only I had been there in time. There is a reason for this. Well. I guess they should leave well enough alone. I'm not sorry for that one. I should be, but I'm not. Corner, it was called. I wonder if this is actually the real lore, though, for the area. For years, local men, farmers and such, made terribly frightening reports of a strange figure wandering up the main street of the small town. A tax collector? At first, based on his bulbous silhouette, they believed he was injured or hunchbacked. An old man walloping through the night. Oh, it's going to be a headless one, But upon a close inspection made by those few brave enough to get close, it was made readily apparent that this hunchback was the figure's nearly severed Called head, it. bobbling behind him, hanging from threads. Oh, the not cut off. Neck. <laughs> <laughs> nearly Talk headless, even. What is his neck? <laughs> Just laugh and don't say anything. Laugh and don't say anything. Self-preservation. It's important. Also, I just realized he's still wearing his nightshades. He doesn't take this off even to sleep. The whole bodysuit? Kind of curious about, but okay. I'm assuming he's some type of vampire? I'm actually very curious what they're going to do with this. I know the main reason is because carrying over a kitten just never took off his armor. But I'm wondering what the new one they came up with, the new rationale is. Also, that he has shades for his shades. Seems a bit odd, but uh, sure, why not? Uh, this same figure also appeared to lack legs. Eh. Oh, again, my motion is broken. How could he walk around with no legs? Really? That's the part that gets I you? I don't know. Uh... I was going to say that's the weird part. It's like, dude, he's headless. But then, supernatural. Dullahans hands are a thing. Not having head is a thing. I'm sure there's plenty of undead monstrosities that don't have heads. Legs are weird, now that I think about it. Because usually, that's just never something that comes up in any folklore, that, as far as I know. I'm guessing it was a flesh wound. A ghost Oh, you're so funny! Ah! Anyway, he wore a sailor suit. <laughs> ah, sea legs, carry on. He wore a sailor suit. The joke is that he wasn't making a joke because to him it suddenly made sense. I don't know. Just no, no. And held what looked like a saggy old sack clutched to his chest. Not touching that one. Desperately making way towards a particular destination. Well, shipwreck survivor. This figure could be seen for days, then weeks, after report upon report, sighting after sighting. Eventually, the villagers decided that enough was enough. Does he ever Something reach the well? Something had to be done. Did they move the well? They settled on a plan. The shambling thing had, of course, been seen on its trail, leading all the way up to the it's well. It's leaving a trail? Where then the thing more than a ghost throw thing. the sack down into its dents, only to soon follow suit, crawling down, down into the murky old well. Did, okay, who went down to investigate? The locals knew that there was only one way to properly investigate. See you later. So they sent a poor Dutch man who just so happened to be smaller than their average down by a rope into the black well to investigate. I'm not going to say it. I'm just not going to say it. Down went the brave Dutchman late one day. Yes, brave, and in no way, shape, or form beaten fear. bloody, so he has to do the it. The murky waters still beneath him. The horror thick in the air, with the notion that the silence could break at any moment with the sound of something waterlogged. It's not like the thing ever harmed anyone. meant to speak. 
this until at last the Dutchman hung above the waters and with a hook pushed down into the darkness by a hook came upon something oh to quickly upon his call they fished up first the Dutchman then a large brown mass from the bottom oh it's gonna be the bodies then it was a bag what with the head one within which they found the Blood. mangled remains of two legs. Ooh, I should hope they drained that bloody well. Oh, of, of course they did. Uh, in its place, they even installed a new pump, and strangely, the sighting ceased after that. Okay, one. The strangest thing here isn't that they were drinking from dead leg water, you know, body tea. It's that at least in this scenario, because they say, oh yeah, they installed a pump, it all went away, it's all fine now. Implying that this isn't just a fairy tale, it's because this actually happened, at least in the Hunter universe. Because those little details like, oh yeah, it got better. Don't happen in fairy tales. In fairy tales, it just ends. In folklore, it just ends. In supernatural things, it just ends. But if you want to attach something to reality, have a conclusion that makes sense. It just got better. It's like, oh, yeah, that's good. Because without that sudden what the fuck moment, they already had the what the fuck of finding the legs. But in this case, it's more of a, okay, we know something's there. Let's get them out. It's just too humdrum and day to day, which honestly freaks me out more because it does imply that this is a very much real thing that did happen here. I didn't realize ghosts were a thing and I probably should have it now because there's literally vampires and werewolves and changelings and all that other crazy shit. Oh, God. There was an entire town drinking dead people. Sorry, dead person. I think I'm going to stop here today. Okay, so we're just going to end on zombie tea. And try not to make a joke about how it'll cost you an arm and a leg, because that's a bit off the knee. Yeah, um... This is a thing. This is a thing that sounds like it actually happened in this story, unironically, and, um, yeah, I'm not freaked out because that's terrifying. It just, it's not that the dead body was in there, because there's a lot of historical myths about people being thrown into wells. Hell, the ring is the easiest one off the top of my head, and that's just a very popular one. There's a lot going into all types of folklore about people being thrown into wells to die. Drinking from it. Because it had been there for a while. So those dead severed legs in the sack were left to steep for a while. Mm. I guess they drink dead people. I guess they dig it. See, this is why I'm stopping. It's not because it's terrifying. It is. It's because I just... Uh, the puns are too easy and they fit and i don't like how well they fit this is disturbing in its own oh god yeah we're just cutting this one here for my own sanity or lack thereof Ugh. sorry just dead people tea it's almost as bad as finding out the emperor's omelet recipe that sick motherfucker actually puts ketchup on it ew so all the same you guys know the deal link below original video hit it up and just go let Bruv Alpha Busa that there is no excuse for ketchup. All the other stuff, I'm sure, why not? It makes sense. He's insane. Ketchup, though. Why would you ruin an omelet like that? No. Oh, God. Ugh. Yeah, that's definitely the part that gets between. The, what is. Just, they're talking about food, and they got the eggs, and, the, and it looks great. And this. I'm very much glad I didn't eat before this because I thought this would make me hungry because talking about an omelet but then it, they just started adding things that are not good in between the tea and the ketchup just, yeah definitely the video not to watch having eaten because I would have this would have been disturbing otherwise I mean it's disturbing also but just ugh yep so all the same again link below hit them up and when you're done don't forget to leave a like comment subscribe and we'll be back next week because I'm just gonna run through this and see if I can get through less dead tea inducing things I'm not gonna get that on my head am I I'm really not yeah. See you guys then. Adios.